Good to see you all. Let's stand up if you have not already stood. And let's praise the name of Jesus together this morning. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Until every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. David Jackson. I'm super excited to be here. I'm the student pastor here at Stafford Cross and Community Church. And I just want to say whether you're here in the, the worship center or you're checking us out online, we are so glad you've chosen to worship God with us this morning. Now, 
If you're new to Stafford Crossing, um, or maybe you're just new-ish, right, whatever that means for you, uh, I want to highly encourage you to check out our digital bulletin. You may have heard of us talk about this, but if you haven't checked it out before, go check it out. It's really cool. You can get there a number of ways. If you're online, just go to our website, check, uh, click the digital bulletin. You'll see all the links right there. We also have an app. It's really cool. Just search in the app store for SC3. You'll find it. Um, and there you can also access the digital bulletin. It has little, little tiles you can click on. And there's some great resources there. It probably answers most of the questions you have um, as far as how to give, how to submit a prayer request, how to get in contact with us, upcoming events. So I encourage you to check that out. But I want to highlight a few events that are coming up. The first one is, of course, the most important, and that's that Fusion Student Ministry kicks back off our fall semester tonight. So we're going to be back on a regular schedule. Now, you can clap for that. I heard a few people trying. Absolutely. Um, yeah, there we go. All, all three of you over there. Um, no, yeah, we got four. No, Fusion's a great time. Um, uh, so if you're a student, middle school, uh, high school student, we encourage you to come out. We start around 5 o'clock. You can show up. We play some games. And then at 5.30, we start our programming in here. Um, it's a great place. We come. We play games together. We fellowship together. And there will obviously be a Bible-centered message and then uh, a biblically-based, student-led conversation about that afterwards. So I encourage you guys to check that out. If you have more questions, I'll be hanging out in the lobby. I'd love to, to meet you or your family and talk about that. A couple of other things coming up, though. Uh, one is our connecting class, so October 2nd and 9th. If, if you've been around Stafford Crossing but just haven't made that decision, like, hey, this is going to be our church home. This is going to be, like, we're going to make it official. Um, then connecting class is the next step for you to learn more information about that, to ask questions, um, and, and to make membership part of, uh, of your connection with us uh, and our church family. Um, also coming up is the Aspire Women's event on Friday, October 7th. Um, I asked a lot of questions. The only thing they would tell me is that there's going to be ladies there. It's an event, and I'm not invited. So, but ladies, I believe you are invited. I think it's going to be a great time, so I encourage you, go on our church website, check out the information, sign up for that. Um, also on the screens here, you're going to see uh, our blood drive is coming up this Thursday, September 22nd, so we need lots of people to come out. Um, don't worry about bringing your own Ziploc bag. We've got all that covered. Just come out um, and donate some blood. Obviously, that's a way for us to meet the physical needs in our community, just like we like to meet the spiritual needs in our community as well. With that, I'm going to invite you to come back to your feet. We're going to continue to prepare our hearts in this moment as we sing these words of praise to our Heavenly Father. I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love. Come down. could not see chains of sin had shackled me but god in heaven heard my plea and jesus jesus rescued me jesus jesus rescued me come on sing it out i will sing forever of your love come down with my hands to heaven shout your praises out i was lost in darkness when you pulled I will sing forever of your love, come down. Now grace so sweet, it floods my soul, and hope eternal won't let go. My daddy race at Calvary, cause Jesus, Jesus, Oh, Jesus, Jesus, rescued me. I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love. Come down. There's a hope beyond the sky. The song we'll sing for all of time. Here it is. The grave is empty. I am free. Cause Jesus, Jesus, rescued me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, rescued me. When you pulled me out, 
place and he is moving. He is at work. And so we're going to celebrate that he is the one that makes the way. He does amazing things. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. Yes, I worship you. You are here Working in this place, and I worship you, God. I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are, that is who you are. darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Oh! 
thank you that we can say that so confidently, that you are the one who can do anything, that you are the one that keeps your promises to, to people who don't keep their promises, who have not been faithful, but yet you have been the faithful one. You keep coming after us. You keep bringing us in. You keep loving us. You keep showing us compassion. And God, I just, I thank you. I'm humbled to know that you love me, that you do amazing things in my life, and I've seen it in so many others. And God, we know that you're going to continue to do great things, and we're going to celebrate that. And I pray that we would never try to take the glory from you, but always loft that on you, because you are the one that's worthy of it. You are the one that's worthy of this praise. So God, be honored with everything that we bring to you today. And may you speak to us now. May we grow in you. We love you. And we pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Y'all can be seated. This life of a disciple, my friends, it's a journey. And we're to engage and help people on their path to trust and follow Jesus. If you are a believer in Jesus, you are called to be a disciple that makes a disciple. You are called to trust and follow. And as you trust and follow, you will multiply and you will be a disciple that makes a disciple. I pray that together we can create a community that chooses to give our best each day to trust and follow Jesus. So good morning, Stafford Crossing. Great having those of you here in our worship center. And if you have us online on a screen, thanks for inviting us there. Uh, today, we are continuing in our series, We Are the Movement. And to give it context, we've spent over the last year talking about and going through the book of Acts. And we're taking a little five-week break to talk about our church's movement in the next 20 years. We've celebrated 20. And now, God, where would you lead us in the next 20 as we continue to pursue you? And so the timing of our journey through the book of Acts and looking to God's word to say, man, we're a part of this movement that started like 2,000 years ago. How will God work in our lives and use us is amazing. And last Sunday evening, we gathered for our annual birthday bash and baptism. Happened here on our campus, and it was an amazing evening. And so I thought it's appropriate just to catch a few highlights by watching this. It was a great night, great night. You know, uh, one of the things that I have enjoyed in my uh, life is coaching basketball. And I think about it, it goes all the way back to when I was in college. I actually coached a high school girls team that was a part of my church uh, back then. Uh, and then, you know, there's a, a little break, and then I get into uh, adulting life, if you will. And we moved here, and our kids were growing up. And then they got old enough to go into the Stafford County Parks and Rec League and the YMCA League, and I ended up coaching their teams at that time. And then as they moved into middle school and high school, I helped coach their AAU teams, and we traveled and played. And it was a lot of fun. Then when they got into the high school arena, the high school world, uh, I became part of the paid coaching staff at their high school, and I did that for a dozen years. And as I look back, I'm like, well, what is it that really attracted me besides the love for the game and enjoy playing? 
that, that, to coaching. And as I began to think about it, it really revolves around the idea and the reality that I loved watching people develop. I watched like loving people grow. I, I love the fact that, you know, after practice and, and drills and skill development, man, these players that they could suddenly rebound better and they could begin to dribble better and they could shoot better and they could play defense better. And, and, and ultimately, they became better teammates. Ultimately, they got to the place where they worked together. At the end of the day, it came to a season and a point where it's like, wow, they even grew in their confidence for how they could show up and actually play the game. Now take that idea of, of training and coaching for just a moment and, and, and move it to the personal world and just think about the careers that are here. I think most of us would say, yeah, there have been seasons and times where we have been the recipients of training and development personally for our, per, for our careers. You know, some, some of you are trained in the military world. And man, that training was significant and that training was very, very important. Uh, some of you are, are trained in the world of how does this bridge... Uh, carry a certain load and it's 300 feet deep into the water and that's mind-blowing you know how all of that comes together and works but some are trained to build bridges that are safe for us to drive on it's like wow some of you as i look around you are trained teachers educators some in law enforcement you've been to the academy you've been you're skilled in in what you do um, you, so you think many of us have received training and equipping for our careers Think for a moment about just personal stuff. Many people in here have, have taken coaching or training, if you will, equipping for personal things in life. Like, man, I just need to be a better money manager, right? And so there's some equipping, some training that happens, and we get better with tracking money and spending money and managing money. There's others who are like, wow, you know, there's a certain DIY project, and I think my friend YouTube can help me, right? And all of a sudden you're going like, man, I checked this out. I can do this now. I've got this. And we venture in and then we call a pro. No, no, no. Then we, we take care of it, right? We, 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 we do what we need to do. And you've got that kind of DIY mindset. You think of others, man, and they're like, man, I'm just in a season of my life where man, my marriage needs some coaching. My marriage needs some mentoring. And we get equipping and we get some training for that. Maybe it's parenting. It's like, wow, you know, as we're moving into this parenting phase, we, we're just stumbling out of the gates we need some help we need some support with parenting and so we reach out and we get some support and some help in parenting so i don't think it's unusual for us to think about development and training when it comes to professions and even some personal stuff but what would it look like if we transferred that idea to our spiritual life what would it look like if we transferred that idea to the church world now, not corporate church, but like me and you as disciples. What would, it, what would it look like if we were trained to have an impact in someone else's life? What would that look like? Today, I want us to see that as disciples of Jesus, we are to be equipped to make a difference in the spiritual transformation of others. We're to be equipped. We're to be ready to speak into the lives of others on their spiritual journey. What would it look like if we were trained to have such an impact? You know, for the, for the past three weeks, we've been talking about enhanced vision for our church. And this enhanced vision is not that we're doing things differently than 20 years ago in terms of what we were called to do, called to be a church that makes disciples and we're going to grow people up in their faith, call people to faith, baptize people in their faith as we just saw. Yes, yes, and yes. But we just said, man, man, here we are looking back at 20. What would the next 20 look like with some enhanced vision, with some energy behind it? And so we've been at work, staff and elders, for a couple of years praying, seeking God's direction to just try to get another cylinder in that engine firing. Now, to make our enhanced vision clear, we've been building out on these Sunday mornings what we've called sort of a vision frame. And we realized, wow, you know, this, this looks like, you know, like, wow, why the time? Why the pause to go around this? Listen, this is just not something that staff and elders should do or the spiritually elite. If we're going to create this community, we need everybody on board. We want to invite everyone into this mission, this vision of creating a community. And if we just speak this to a few, only a few will be engaged in transformation. But we want it for all, for all of us to be engaged. And so this vision frame um, starts at the very top. I started this three weeks ago, and we looked at our mission statement. And it's highlighted by a compass. It tells us where we are going. It shows us the direction. We've said it out loud, and I think it's worth doing again. 
It's on your printed notes. It'd be on the screens. It's on your app if you have a digital copy. So let's say this out loud together. You ready? We are creating a community. Well, we started poorly. <laughs> and I will take responsibility for that as a bad leader. Never did it good in choral directing. All right? So let's start again. You ready? We are creating a community that chooses to give our best each day to trust and follow Jesus. Well done, guys. Well done. And so this is an all-hands-on-deck opportunity, an all-hands-on-deck moment. We, together, each of us, are creating this community. Now, on the right side of this vision frame, we talked about our values. Values, by that word values, you see like a flame. And this is what burns inside of us. These are like the core convictions that inspire, that motivate, that drive us to carry out our mission. This is a sort of like, why do we do that? Why are we on mission? It's because as we live out these values, our mission will be fulfilled. So we've walked to, through two values already. We live for life change because we will never know God's best if we stay the same. This idea of transformation, this is really the biblical word like sanctification, the ongoing work of Jesus and his disciples, this ongoing work of change in us. It's, it's important that we live for life change because we'll never know God's best if we stay the same. The second value we've talked about is we risk for relationships because the richest life is lived in community. And we said, man, this isn't a solo sport. This isn't something I just do on my own in isolation. Even the introverts among us will have one or two others, man, that are, are like critical to their spiritual development and spiritual formation. Now, we've got two values left. I'm going to talk about one of those today. But you'll notice these values are in a lot of places where there's some new signage in our hallway. There's new banners up and down the driveway that reflect these values of why we're doing our mission, what we want to see what we want to engage in. So let me encourage you to be mindful of those. In fact, there were even uh, these new values were even on our T-shirts we gave out last week for our 20th anniversary. And maybe you weren't here, maybe you didn't pick up a 20th anniversary T-shirt. There's tables outside. Be sure to stop and get one. Maybe you weren't here at the beginning of summer. We passed out soft-sided coolers, right? And if you didn't get, there's one of those for every family. And if you haven't picked one up, stop by. And pick one up. We hope both of these will just be tools for having spiritual conversations. It's like, oh wow, you're at the pool, you're at the soccer game, you're at wherever, and it's like, you see, they see the shirt or they see the cooler, and like, oh yeah, or you go to church or you engage in a faith community anywhere, and suddenly just spiritual conversations and invitations can happen naturally. So we've unpacked two of our values. We've also unpacked two of our measures. The measures are at the bottom, and you'll see a, a target, a bullseye, and so. That's, this tells us if we're actually being effective in building up and growing disciples. This is who we're supposed to come. And if we're becoming these type of individuals, these type of disciples, then, man, we're hitting the bullseye. We've talked about two of those. We've talked about being a renovator, one who relentlessly uh, participates in God's transformative work for all. And we've already talked about this idea of being an ally, one who intentionally, intentionally builds relationships for gospel impact. It's like as I go throughout life, it's not just a neighbor, it's not just a coworker, it's not just somebody I'm communicating with, but it's like there's intentionality. Like, how could God use me in those moments to have gospel impact, to share his love? And so our values and our measures are very closely tied. As we live for life change, we become a renovator. And as we risk for relationships, we live the life of an ally. Now, we've also looked at the left side at three of our strategies. Three of our strategies. We've talked about, and you notice by the strategy where there's a flashlight. This, this illuminates the path. This is how we're going to get there. This is how we're going to build renovators and allies and guides and investors. And the way we've unpacked this so far, we've talked about what it means to encounter God. And that's something that we've done for 20 years. The church has done historically since the beginning. And we talk about it as an act of worship. Right? We worship personally as we do Bible study and devotions and we have prayer times and private worship times of singing where nobody can hear us, right? And it's always beautiful and loud. But then there's also corporate times, right? Where we gather here corporately like we are now and we worship together. Encounter God. We've also explored this engaging community. Now, engaging community, we've done that since like the third month our church existed and we called them small groups back in the day for 19 years. 
Now, these small groups, these study groups, will still happen in the engage group category. And as Dave said last week, you're like, well, why are you changing the name? Does it even matter? Well, it matters because we want to broaden the scope of these engage groups. We've even got Pastor Mark coming on full time to help funnel and fuel these. So you, you got this idea of these engage groups, and they're just much broader. As I said, some of those will still be study groups. They'll study the Bible. They'll have spiritual community, and they'll do fun things periodically. Still good. Still need to happen. But we're also going to be having some activity-based groups. You know, and maybe it's like you like canoeing. Maybe you like pickleball. Maybe you like fill-in-the-blank activity. And you want to, you, you say, well, God is bringing these certain people into my life, and you do those activities, but then there's spiritual uh, elements brought to the table. You know, it's like, wow, there's devotions. There's prayer time, and other people see how you're loving on one another and how you're caring for one another. It's like, yes, do that. I was excited to hear one couple who's like, this is like outside our comfort zone. But man, as we're hearing this, we feel compelled to, to, to start a dog walking group. I'm being serious. And they're like, um, we, we like to walk our dog. There's people in our neighborhood who do. And they've already got devotional materials in their hands, picked out, ready to go. To start engaging with people in their community intentionally and bringing Christ to the table. That's like amazing. This idea of these kind of groups, these activity-based groups that get together. Uh, there's also the possibility of mission-focused groups. Maybe it's like you want to be involved in Beauty for Ashes, and you're like, what's that? Uh, there's a local ministry partner of ours um, that, um, who focuses on women with children and helping them overcome addiction. And it's the only place we know of where the children can stay in this residential home with their moms while they're going through recovery. And they're cared for and loved in a very unique way. And, and maybe you're like, man, I want to champion that. I want to be a part of that. And, and suddenly you, you do that, like we're going to do that every week and support them in some way. And, and then you're going to find other ways to bring spiritual conversation to your group through a Bible study or a prayer or a devotional. Um, and, and so again, it's, an, it's a mission focus. There's also the possibility of affinity-based groups under the engaged group category. I, I was excited last night. There was a young adult group that, that got together. The first meeting of this engaged group and under infin, affinity group, there's nearly 30 20-year-olds that got together last night at, at a home and just began this conversation. What does it look like if we create an engaged group where we can do life together and meet and pray and study and do fun stuff and hold each other accountable? It's like, wow, I can't wait to see what God does with that group. So we've talked about these engaging in community opportunities. Last week is probably the most significant add that we have uh, to our strategy, and it's called Expand God's Kingdom. And we're going to do that through catalyst groups, and Dave talked about those last week. This is where two or three people, or maybe two couples, get together for a set period of time, and they study God's Word. And then they ask spiritual questions around our measures to see if we're growing to become a disciple that will then make a disciple. And so this, is, again, it's a new part of the strategy as we talk about this idea of creating opportunities for people to be intentionally discipled who will then go and make disciples. Now, that sort of catches us up to speed. If you're like, yeah, I've heard that. That's good review. Thank you. Awesome. If you're like, I missed a week. That didn't make sense. I'd like to know more about that. Our messages are on our app and our website, and I would encourage you to go and watch the last three because, again, we want to be fully engaged, each of us, in this journey of growing our hearts to be more like Jesus. Well, today, I want to pick up and introduce a new value, a new measure, and our very final element of our strategy. And I want, to, I want to think around this topic, this idea, train for impact. I started with that illustration, that analogy of coaching, and being equipped and trained. So how does that work in our lives as disciples? Now, to lay that foundation for why being equipped and why being trained for impact is significant and even biblical, I want to take us on a short journey. I want to start by just reminding us of what a couple, about the meaning of a couple of words. The first word is a disciple. What is a disciple? A disciple is simply a learner, a follower of someone who would be considered a master. Some of you in your career and profession, you know, you're like, you're an, a master electrician and you have an apprentice, right? You, you can think about other trades, right, where you're watching and you're observing and then you emulate. So when you think about a disciple... A disciple is one who is a learner or a follower of Jesus. 
They're people who have been transformed by his saving work on the cross. They're learning from their master. They're, they realize that their sins have been forgiven by his substitutionary atonement. They realize, man, as they grow through God's word, then they're to take that and share it with others. Disciple. Discipleship is simply where disciples grow in their journey. We learn and we grow to become more and more like Jesus. It's important to remember that as we partner with other disciples, we have never arrive. And again, that is not to discourage us, but to motivate us, to inspire us. You know, um, my story is different probably from your story. I came to faith in Jesus when I was a 12-year-old boy. I was blessed to come up in a home whose parents feared Jesus, loved Jesus, loved His church. And that was the beginning of my journey. But I'm here to tell you, I don't know everything between the beginning and the ending. And I've read stories, and I come back, and I'm going like, oh, forgot that one. I forgot that detail, or I never saw that detail. And that's just the richness of God's Word. We never, ever get to a place where we're like, I got it. Don't need to read it. Don't need to study it. I mean, just take our study of the book of Acts, for example. We've spent, you know, 40-something weeks. You know what we could do? We could come back in January and start again. And guess what? It would be sound totally different. New words, new ideas, new thoughts. We could do it again, and there would be some similarities, but as I, I, did, I forgot that. I didn't see that. Who was that guy? Where did he come from? That is the richness of God's Word. He speaks to us in those moments, and then as we continue on our journey, there's fresh, fresh new ideas, fresh teachings from His Holy Word. Have you ever read the verse and go like, how many times have I read that? And I never thought of that. I never saw it. Anybody? I mean, those things happen to me frequently. It's like, oh, yeah. Good to know. So discipleship is that kind of journey. We're never perfect. We're never completely obedient. But it's that ongoing process. Now with that backdrop, a third word I'd like to introduce today. Disciple making. Disciple, discipleship, now disciple making. What's disciple making? Well, it's grounded and it's rooted in Scripture. And it's a verse that is an anchor for our church. And it has been for 20 years. From the Great Commission in Matthew 28, starting verse 18. Jesus came to them and he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Disciple making comes from the idea that as disciples of Jesus, we are called to make disciples. We're to teach, we're to model the ways of Jesus for others. And when you think about disciple making, specifically from this passage, there are like three components, three elements, if you will. The first we want to think about is repentance. Repentance. People need to hear the message of the gospel and actually be saved by God's amazing grace. People realize that because of this fall, the sin condition in our heart and in our lives, that we need help, we need Jesus. Jesus closes uh, this gap, if you will, he, he makes a relationship possible between us and God through the forgiveness of our sins. Repentance is essential on this biblical making journey. And as we saw last Sunday and in the video today, man, when people have come to faith in Jesus, their next step is baptism. It's a public demonstration of what Jesus is doing in their life. Now, being saved, having repentance, being baptized is not the end goal. Oftentimes, churches, church leaders say, man, They came to faith in Jesus. Awesome. Who's next? But that's really the starting line of how we grow in our relationship with Jesus, how we mature in our faith. So we must go from repentance to development. Development. People need to be learning and growing and becoming more like Jesus. Basketball players I coached needed development. Those of you in the marketplace, in the workplace, you need a development. When you think about your family life, about your marriage, about your parenting skills, it needs development. It's natural. We need to bring that to our faith journey. Real and lasting disciple-making can only happen when we invest in others out of the overflow of what Jesus is doing in us. And we go from repentance to development to deployment. Disciple-making is not fully complete until the disciple passes on to others what they have received. And that happens in our lives, specifically for us as we're thinking about these catalyst groups of two, three, or two couples meeting together, investing, being deployed, 
Disciple making is not complete until there's multiplication. And again, that's why there's a set time on these groups. We meet for a few months, several months, nine months to a year, and then, hey, let's pray about where we can go, who we can invest in. Disciples make disciples who make disciples through repentance, development, and deployment. So that is a biblical foundation for why being equipped, for why being trained for impact, of why this matters so that we can lead people on a disciple-making journey. So with that backdrop, a value, a measure, and our final strategy. Let's start with our third value. We train for impact because true disciples are deployed to make disciples. The thought of being deployed to meet another person and to pour into their life and then to pour into your life may really be intimidating for some people here. You're like, oh, slow down there, Peter Rabbit. I just don't know that I can do that. That really scares me. I'm paralyzed, man. I'm frozen in my tracks. I mean, what if, just what if somebody asked me a question and I don't know the answer? Or what if they ask me a question and I tell them the wrong answer? Here are a couple of thoughts about being deployed to make disciples. Disciple making. First, really, it's not as hard as it sounds. It's not as hard as it sounds. Every believer is called to make disciples, is given the tools, and is empowered by the Holy Spirit to do so. It's really not as hard as it sounds. Here are some things I've learned. Here are some things I'm learning. Can we do this together? And boom, disciple making is happening. We're investing in the lives of others, helping them grow in Jesus as we're growing in Jesus. Beautiful. Took place in Scripture, should take place today. It's not as hard as, you, as it sounds. Secondly, another no-brainer is, hey, listen, it's probably best to invest in people who want to be discipled. I mean, all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, there's no interest. Continue to pray and let God redirect you in a direction to where it's like, yes, yes, this person, they show interest. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to come running to you. Hey, will you disciple me? I, I want to learn from you. No, 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 no. Hey, hey. But it means our eyes are scanning and we're trusting the Spirit to lock eyes with us and others, man, who are on a journey. And they just appear open and they just appear receptive. And we go there and we ask. So we look for people who are hungry for development. Now, when we train for impact, we take on the life of a guide. A guide is simply someone who faithfully prepares to help others deepen their relationship with God. We're a guide. We're like a disciple agent. I mean, just think for a moment what it looks like to be a guide. Think with me. Uh, let's say that you meet someone who comes from a different culture, maybe a different cult country. Maybe they have a different religion in, in their heritage. So what would be natural and normal for you as a guide? You would begin to learn about their culture, their country, their origin. Oh, that is a picture of their national flag. Hmm, where are they located on the map? Oh, there it is. What are their, you know, you begin to just absorb their culture. Then you begin to think, well, was there a certain religion that was predominant in that area? Well, I want to learn about that. You begin to get equipped as a guide, so you just learn about who they are as a person. And man, along the way, you're just praying, God, while I'm learning about them, ultimately, at the end of the day, I want to invest in them. I want to be able to prepare and Show them Jesus. God, help me to prepare along the way. Maybe you meet a person. Um, maybe God just keeps bringing this name to mind. And man, they have a hobby, an interest that is not yours. And you're clueless. L let's just say for a kicks and giggles that they enjoy lawn care. Okay? Don't laugh at me. So let's just say they enjoy lawn care. And you're like, that is terrible. I hate mowing the grass. Uh, some people love it. Uh, the grass doesn't talk back to me. It's awesome. So what happens is as we go through this journey, it's like, man, I'm, I'm going to begin to Google. How do you grow grass? Um, a lawn care. I should not use that phrase in church. Um, <laughs> lawn care. Uh, how do you grow lawns? You never know who's going to rip a sound bite out of a sermon. You never know. How do you grow a lawn? Right? How is it lush? How is it thick? How is it green? How often do you aerate? How often do you put out lime? I mean, you just begin to immerse yourself in lawn maintenance. And you're going, man, along the way, 
I'm going to engage this person. And maybe I'm even going to ask them to, hey, how do you how do you do that? How do you have a green lawn? But along the way, you're not really, really contemplating what it looks like to have a beautiful lawn, lawn that grows. You're, you're thinking about, man, I want to introduce them into Jesus who is like green pastures. I want to bring faith into this equation. I want them to understand what it means to have a relationship with the one who gives life even when there's a drought, life even when it's hot and dry, and life even when the nutrients aren't right. I mean, God's just that amazing. You, you with me? You're tracking. I mean, we want to be a learner so that we can guide people. Maybe you come across someone and you're like, man, I, 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 I'm aware that they struggle with infertility. And I'm like, man, I, I don't know what that's like. What is that about even? And man, I just start to learn. What are some common causes? How do people walk that journey emotionally? What are some potential helps? What are potential avenues for relief from that? And begin having conversations. Hey, tell me your journey. Tell me your story. I've been reading some. And at the end of the day, we want to come to a place where because of our journey, we can say, wow, I want to bring the God of comfort to this, the God of hope to this. We begin to look for those opportunities. Does it begin to resonate that as a guide, we're trained for impact. We don't show up with all the answers, but we're just on a journey. We're discovering. We're asking questions. We're learning so that we can share Jesus with people. So that is a look at our value of training for impact. With this measure, there's a couple of questions that come to mind. I think they're coming up on the screen next. What topic do I need to learn more about so I can help others in their faith? What am I learning about God that I will share with someone else? Both of these equip us just to be a disciple who helps others grow in their faith. So we've talked about a value. We've talked about a measure. We come to the strategy. It's like, well, how's this going to happen? And that's, again, the flashlight's just illuminating the way of how this is going to work. And so you'll see a phrase over there, equip for impact. Equip for impact. We want to be trained. We want to be equipped and the strategy in terms of how. And so as a church family, we're going to create something called Equip You. Equip You. It can be Equip You. It can be Equip University. We don't care, you know, which way you translate the word, the letter U. But we want to be an equipping church. Now, let me just share the idea behind this. It comes out of what Paul taught to the church in Ephesus. He says, It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some pastors and elders to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So again, we're preparing, we're equipping, we are training. Paul knew that was necessary as he planted these churches and would leave. People had to be raised up, they had to be equipped, they have to be trained, and so do we. Now let me just share this about equip you before I get into the details. As staff and elders, we realize as we cast this vision, you're like, dude, I don't have any more time, and you're adding to my plate. Last week, Dave talked about it, and he added... You know, this idea of these uh, catalyst groups, and now you're talking about these, you know, equipping opportunities. I, I, I'm out of time. Well, the time factor doesn't really change that much, if any at all. Maybe because if you look at our strategy, I mean, we're encountering God right now. We've got this worship idea. And when you're in the encountering God arena, some of you on serving teams, you're serving Kids Crossing or your own fusion ministry team or you're helping with first touch or greeters and you're the tech team i mean you're actively involved in serving and that's an encountering god aspect that to where you're allowing others to encounter god as you serve and we're talking about you know being engaged in community a lot of people are already in small groups previously or starting an engaged group and so people are doing a lot of people are doing those kinds of things already and so catalyst groups two people, three people, or maybe two couples, and we've given people permission, hey, you may not have time to do both, a catalyst group and an engage group. Then it's, it's fine. And I would tell somebody, man, if, if you got the opportunity to engage into a catalyst group, two people, three people, or a, two couples, man, go there. You're going to get community, you're going to get cared for, and you're going to get great Bible study. So, so start there. If you have to pick and choose. But, but this idea of time, we realize, is valuable. And so when it comes to time, and it also comes back to realizing that people can only adapt to so much change at one time. So as I talk about Equip You, we don't have an Equip You opportunity for you to sign up for today, and that's intentional. We're casting vision, 
I'm going to tell you what it might look like one day. But today, you can just know it's a part of our strategy. But let me walk you through it. Um, in a calendar year, there would be a handful of opportunities for you to be equipped, to be trained for impact. Maybe it would be an opportunity like, you know, the basics of biblical interpretation, understanding key doctrines, uh, developing personal spiritual practices. Maybe it's help with parenting. Maybe it's dealing with loss and grief. All kinds of tools and training that would be available. Some of these may be offered um, just totally online. It's like we shoot a video and we upload this video on this certain topic strategically. It may be a podcast, hey, something you listen to, taking the kids to the soccer field, or going to work. It may be, hey, here's a book or an ebook or a video we want you to watch, and we're going to discuss it. Now, we may discuss it in room 110. We may discuss it on Zoom. As we think about being equipped and being trained for impact, there'll be a handful of times through the year where we'll drop information there, and we'll communicate it. There will be some of those that are going to be static, that are, people, that are always there for people who are new or just need a refresher on some key growth areas. Now, the last, or yesterday actually, we had about 70 people here in this room on two different occasions talking about this enhanced vision in one setting. Dave and I are able to sort of walk around the entire frame, have dialogue, Q&A. Uh, we had great time of conversation yesterday. We have another opportunity tonight during Fusion. We have another opportunity next Saturday night tagged with a chili cook-off, which I can't wait to help judge that. Uh, but let me encourage you to go to our website, use our app, and, and sign up for one of those just to make certain that we have enough food here. Now, I want to close with this. Study after study shows that most Christians are not actively sharing their faith. Most studies say that 90% of Christians have never shared their faith with anyone outside their immediate family. Add to that this. A recent LifeWay research survey says that in the next seven years, average church attendance on Sunday morning by Americans will drop from 17% to 14%. I wonder if those are related in any way. The fact that people are sharing their faith infrequently and the church is declining significantly. Possibly. Now, when you think about those two realities, those problems, um, I think there are very few pastors, very few church leaders who are intentionally equipping people, training people for impact. So often the church has held the program card and, hey, come and do this, and we've not held the equipping card as well to where we are training people for maximum impact, where we are equipping people to be deployed. I think it's something that has been neglected. And I think for us to reach the next generation, for us to actually reach the ends of the earth, we need spirit-filled, equipped, trained, disciple-making disciples. So our leadership team feels we need to do this. Let me paint a picture, uh, an illustration, if I may, of what this might look like. I want to use three different floating devices to paint this picture. Here's the first one. It is a cruise ship. You know what happens on a cruise ship? Man, I go there and I have a lot of fun. And some people treat churches like cruise ships. Man, I'm going to go there. they got a great student program. I like the way they teach the Bible. I like the way their music sounds. I like their family ministry. Hey, it's a great place to network for my career and for my business. And they show up. At the cruise ship, they get what they want. They feel good. It's sort of a consumer-driven deal. Man, I like that. And, but man, get this. If they ever change the menu, if they ever stop doing what I like, or they don't do it the way I like it, dude, there's plenty of cruise ships in the harbor. I'll just jump on another one, and I'll go on that cruise ship. That happens so often, sadly, in church life. Contrast that to this next boat, a battleship. A battleship is out there on the front lines engaging in battle. But this is what happens on the battleship. The pastors, the elders, they're identifying the enemy, and they're pulling the trigger. And everybody else that's on the battleship is watching. They're doing their little roles, their little jobs. They're not actively engaged. But those people that are getting paid, man, they're the ones they're identifying the target and pulling the trigger. Better than a cruise liner, but not as good as the next option 
And that's this. The battleship. You know what happens on a battleship? On a battleship, planes are brought in. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I did that in the last service, too. Thank you. Roll Tide, by the way. Um, so you come to this aircraft carrier. And you know what happens on an aircraft carrier? The planes are positioned. Pilots are trained. It's fueled. It's loaded up. And it goes and engages the enemy. Do you know what an aircraft carrier does not want? Fire on the deck. They don't want any battle nearby. They're not equipped for that. But man, fuel them up, train them up, and send them out. That is what a battleship does. I'm sorry, an aircraft carrier does. <laughs> so, well, you'll remember this, I'm sure. That's what an aircraft carrier does. But friends, I think the church needs to model itself after an aircraft carrier. An aircraft carrier to where people are trained, they're equipped, and they're deployed to make a difference. To make a difference wherever they live, wherever they work, wherever they play. We, at Stafford Crossing, want to be that. An equipping training center for people to go out on mission. Train for impact. Deployed to be disciples who make disciples. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you so much for your call in our lives. We thank you for what you're doing and you're going to do. God, we want to take seriously your call to be equipped to make a difference in the spiritual transformation of others. God, lead us individually. God, empower us as a church to be a guide who trains for impact. God, in my life, I've seen nothing that's more adrenalizing than watching you at work. And I pray that it becomes contagious. And I pray in our future, God, it happens more and more. For your glory, for the reaching of your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Daryl. So we're going to close singing one last song together. So would you come to your feet? And we're just going to ask that God would be the center of everything that we do here in the church, but also just in our lives, that he would be the center of our lives. Let's sing that out. glory turn my eyes to my heart to sing and wonder how you love me to my heart oh my God forever you reign here and now hear the sound of your
Wherever you reign, here and now, hear the sound of your name. Let's sing to our Lord. Jesus, there is none more beautiful than Jesus. There is none more powerful than risen Christ. loud come on This is going to be your benediction. Go in peace and go with power. Trust in Him, our great provider. Give each day your very best to God. And walk in truth and live in freedom. Follow Him, our great redeemer. Give each day your very best. Best to God. Give each day your very best to God. With that.